Last week, uh, I had a debate, at least I think it was a debate, with Governor Palin. I, uh, and, uh, and last night, and last night, Barack had his second debate with John McCain. Now, I realize I'm slightly prejudiced about our ticket, but if this was the best of five series, it'd be over. <laughs> it'd be done. Folks, speaking of Obama, again, uh, in the debate last night, what was most notable to me was what you didn't hear, what you uh, couldn't hear. On, uh, on the middle class, John McCain's silence was deafening once again. You didn't hear, you didn't hear John mention the words middle class one single time, again, after the second debate. And more importantly, the questions from the people of that town hall last night, I believe, personally believe, reflected what a majority of the American people are looking for. A steady hand, leadership, an optimist, not an angry man lurching from one position to another. They're looking for answers. The American people are looking for answers. How to deal, how to deal with the jobs that are being lost in this economy, their jobs, the lack of affordable health care that affects their kids, their husbands, wives. Ladies and gentlemen, the retirement security they see literally vanishing before their very eyes. And maybe equally as important in my view, how and when to use our power abroad. That, that, what was most, what was at the same time remarkable as well as reassuring is what you didn't hear from those folks. You didn't hear a single question about the ugly inferences and the unbecoming personal attacks launched by the McCain campaign on Barack Obama. You didn't hear one single average person ask that. Barack Obama showed again last night that he understands he understands that these debates aren't about Governor Palin and me. They aren't about Barack Obama and John McCain. These debates, this election, is about you, not us. This election. This election. This election, this election, in the words of the folks I grew up in my neighborhood, is literally about dignity and respect. The respect American people deserve is simply, if you've got to cut it all aside, cut through everything, from our perspective, it's about fairness. It's about how to reclaim, it's about how to reclaim, and I mean this sincerely, I'm not looking for an applause line here. I mean this seriously because this is what it's about. It's about dignity, respect, fairness. It's simply about how to reclaim the greatness of this country. And it's that basic. Ladies and gentlemen, John McCain's campaign has reached a very difficult place. And I'm being serious here. It's a difficult place. If they wanted to be intellectually honest, they really only have three choices. One, and I mean this literally, one, they can deny that we're in trouble and say that things are pretty good, we just need a little fine-tuning. That's one intellectually honest position they could argue from their perspective. Two, they could explain why the policies of the, late, the last eight years, why they aren't a problem, why is some other reason 
that's caused us to get in this god-awful deep hole we've been dug into both at home and abroad. Or thirdly, they can be intellectually honest and acknowledge that the economic situation that we face today is the final verdict of a failed economic philosophy. And it needs a wholesale change. Total change. In my view, they're the only three intellectually honest options that can be chosen. But there's one other option. There's one other option. The one they have chosen is to appeal to fear with the veiled question, who is the real Barack Obama? Ladies and gentlemen, to have a vice presidential candidate raise the most outrageous inferences, the ones that John McCain's campaign is condoning, is simply wrong. 